Hello YouTube, I have no idea how this video is going to turn out because I came up with the idea like a week ago now um, and didn't get around to filming it because I have had the worst week of my life. I have literally felt like I've had a migraine all week without the like horrific headache. Um, so I haven't been able to look at screens for particularly long. Um, I have basically spent most of the week in bed feeling like super super fatigued to the level like where sitting up made me feel like I was about to pass out um and like I was struggling to keep my eyes open and things um so so hence the uh not filming when I came up with the idea and then I just kind of was busy um and now I'm sleep deprived life is all good right now but Anyway, so I'm going to try and film this video, however brain foggy and sleep deprived I may be. Um, today I'm going to talk about how you know you're chronically ill. Number one, you know you're chronically ill when you get a new symptom and you're like, is this a chronic illness thing? Is this a new symptom of this chronic illness? Do I have a new chronic illness? Or is this just like something that normal people get? You like have this whole internal monologue running through your head of like what the hell this new symptom is. And it's just like, what? What is going on with you body? And normal people, if they get a new symptom, they'll just go to a doctor and get it sorted out. And we just kind of don't really know what to do because on the one hand it could be like a new thing of the chronic illness we already have on it could also be another diagnosis um and it could just be like normal person sickness definitely something i've experienced recently with getting a lot of widespread pain like at first i was like is this just because i'm not exercising and then i was like shit this is real pain this is a problem but is it gonna stop and now it's been like two months and I'm like, no, no, it's it's not going to stop. This is, this is here for life. We're going to have to do something about it and face the realities of another diagnosis. But you also know you're chronically ill when you just spend your life denying it to yourself and questioning whether it's really real, especially while you're going from stages of not being diagnosed. Um, and having people not believe you and taking you seriously, you question whether everyone feels like this, whether it's just normal and you can't cope because it has taken over your life for possibly so long now that it has become your normal. And especially with symptoms such as fatigue, I mean, everyone gets tired, everyone moans about being tired all the time. And sometimes it's hard to tell yourself that what you're feeling is completely different from what joey next door is feeling <laughs> like but but it is and you just spend forever questioning like is this is this just part of being an adult you kind of end up kidding yourself into believing it's all just normal even though it's not um you also know you're chronically ill when netflix becomes your like number one bestie like Netflix and Nights of Painsomnia, I mean, like, it's just a gift from God. There were so many nights at uni when I was alone last year in a room and I was in a lot of pain with my endo and Gilmore Girls was always there for me. Gilmore Girls was always there to distract me from the pain and distract me from the fact that I couldn't sleep because I was in pain. Like, Gilmore Girls, you are like number one chronic pain saviour. I don't know if anyone else agrees with me. Does anyone else love Gilmore Girls as much as I love Gilmore Girls? Like, it's so relatable as someone who is now going into their second year of university. Um, I especially found the season when Rory was in her first year at Yale so relatable. Like, it was just everything I needed in a TV show. What else? You realise your pets seem to know if you're ill, like they'll just like randomly come and snuggle up to you more than they did before. I mean like my dog's not a very cuddly dog, but 
she seems to be becoming a more cuddly dog the more ill I get like is there a correlation in that who knows you also resist going to A&E more than the average person and I think this is because sometimes like your symptoms can be like your normal symptoms and not cause you any problem like if I for whatever reason randomly start limping on my leg it doesn't mean I've broken my leg um like there's probably nothing wrong with my leg it just does things that it shouldn't do or like if you suffer from migraines and they are so painful and you have one of those one of those ones and like the average person would think oh this is a like really 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 excruciatingly terrible headache like I should probably go to A&E in case I'm having a stroke or something and you just write it out until you kind of reach that point where you're like oh oh I, I, I need to go now um I don't know especially with me with endo the amount of times I've had like really severe lower right abdominal pain and just done nothing about it because 99.9% .9 of the time it will just be endo it's not going to be my appendix it's going to be like a 0.1% of the time that it could be and however much I don't want to risk that I also don't want to spend my night in A&E don't want to spend my day in A&E don't want to make my family take me to A&E when I know there's a 99.9% chance that it's nothing that is gonna like kill me when you have a chronic illness you also seem to like go to a and e a lot as well as avoiding it because you need pain relief i know like a lot of spoonies who do go to a and e a lot because they need pain relief um and like they're literally throwing up from the pain and this happens on a regular basis i'm not like that i don't throw up like I just I don't throw up in general I haven't properly thrown up in like probably coming up like 10 years now actually um so I don't throw up <laughs> but I know a lot of students who do literally throw up from pain and you know have to go to any for relief obviously but <laughs> the rest of us and I think a lot of us do have the mentality of trying to ride it out for as long as possible because a&E is not a nice place to be. Number whatever number we are on now. You know you're chronically ill when you're too tired to like sit in a bath or have a shower. Like literally basic daily functions seem to suddenly zap all of your energy. And it's like, why? What? What is going on? Why? Why? You know, why am I lacking so much energy that I physically can't clean myself? Um, you know you're chronically ill when you end up living off dry shampoo and various other items to like keep yourself looking clean when actually you actually haven't washed your hair in a couple of weeks last thing is you know you're chronically ill when you end up over analyzing every single piece of food or drink item you put in your body <laughs> or like medicine you put in your body um, this dairy gonna like mess up my hormones and hurt my endo or is this dairy gonna mess up my digestion or is this dairy gonna give me a migraine it like applies with everything it applies with supplements um like if it, is this iron supplement gonna absorb if i have it with this this and this is you know <laughs> is this probiotic gonna help and you end up constantly looking for like new natural remedies and like anything to try and alleviate your symptoms because you don't want to be on like 15 different medications and like 10 million different pills a day you just end up really over analyzing everything and like the benefits and the pros and cons of taking or eating or drinking whatever you're drinking like you know should i drink this alcohol knowing it could make my endo hurt because sugar or like should i should i take 2400 milligrams of ibuprofen in one dose knowing that is very much an overdose but i'm in so much pain that like you know pro con balance scale what are the chances of me dying what are the chances of it helping 
Yeah, you end up basically like just overanalyzing everything you put in your body and it can get really hard and difficult to overcome, especially from it, as someone from an eating disordered background. Um, like getting over it is definitely a part of learning to trust your body and just, you know, whatever happens, happens. And but you may not have the luxury of just trusting your body. Um, but if you want to work towards that, it's, I think it's just about slowly incorporating things and seeing how they react to you. Um, and yeah, okay. I, I am actually on my last thing now. I just realised that one just kind of combined two. Okay, last thing. You end up being in a position where mentally you want to do things. Mentally you're all up for doing things. But like physically you can't because of pain or like fatigue or like nausea or whatever the symptom is or just like some wonderful combination com, com, wonderful combination of all of the above um which is really quite depressing um we often suffer from mental health issues us chronically ill people probably because of that because when you're so ill that you can't do anything you end up getting so mentally bored um you like mentally need some sort of occupation because like however physically bad your body feels like your brain you know your brain still needs occupying your mind still needs occupying i am a person who definitely needs mentally occupying and definitely likes being productive when i can so i hate it when i have weeks where i can like not get out of bed all week it just it's not good for my mental health um yeah and then it gets you into a position where you see like all your friends moving forward and getting on with life and you're just like damn i'm stuck here in bed and you know it's not really ideal but there we are that's our life i swear i said i was on the last one but now i've like come up with loads of other things to say um yes editing is gonna be like forever so i'm just gonna ramble until like okay you also know when you're chronically ill because you get a lot of comments from people like people who aren't chronically ill and don't understand and they're like well maybe when uni starts again and you'll be back in a routine your fatigue won't be as bad because because what what is your basis for my fatigue not being as bad when i am stressed to the hilt over not being able to understand a word of European law when I have two coursework deadlines and a drama society show to be at and a climbing competition and a carol singing thing to be at and God knows whatever else I could have going on in the same week of my life, you know? <laughs> like, like, because of course my chronic fatigue is gonna be better I mean, 100% being honest right now, yes, I am aware that doing nothing can make fatigue worse, um, especially normal, healthy people, but my fatigue was just as bad, if not worse, when I was working full-time. When I was working 48 plus hours a week, I worked and then I went to bed. That, that was my life. It was work in bed. It's like I... I was so glad that I was in a position where my job, like food, was caged for because I didn't even have the energy to cook. I just, like literally, I just worked for 8 hours a day, 11 hours a day, whatever it happened to be, and then went to bed um, because I was just so exhausted. And when I was doing things and working, I literally didn't even know how I was managing to stand up. So no, being busy, being productive will not cure my fatigue. The only benefit of that situation is having a goal and having a purpose makes it so much easier to manage. Like I say I don't know how I got through last year or the year before or the year before that, but I think the reason I got through and worked throughout all the fatigue and all the pain and all the nausea and all the digestive issues and everything was because I had a goal. I had an end goal that was worth something to me. Um, I think things that aren't necessarily 
worth something to you it's a lot harder to push and push through that but the second it becomes worth it it's it's so much easier to deal with it okay that is that is like actually the end now so yes i hope you enjoyed whatever remains of this currently 16 18 18 minute video it will be a lot shorter when it comes up on your subscription feeds or suggestion feeds or wherever it comes up but yes that is my video done um remember to like comment and subscribe and comment any other things that like make you know you're chronically ill or like little quirks you have that other normal healthy people don't um yeah and i will see you in my next video